Welcome back to The Read. Our guest tonight is an Emmy Award winning writer, creator, and actor. She is the co-producer and writer of the upcoming film Queen and Slim. Give it up for Lena Waithe, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Nah. Give it up for you because Queen and Slim comes out November 27th. Yes. We have been fortunate enough to see it a couple times. Yeah, we hosted a screening with you and Melina. Y'all must was be like, tired of talking to me about it. No, no actually. <laughs> actually not. Because like I told you, when I saw Queen and Slim the first time, it stuck with me. Like I wow. woke up the next morning thinking about that fucking movie. Yep. And Thank then you. saw it again. This motherfucker cried. So Both times. Like, Ooh, which is hard to do. It's, it's Both times. Because you cried at Thanksgiving episode. He was like, nah, I'm yes. going to that episode. He was That's like, you right. might cry. I didn't cry. I was like, fair enough. Right. Right, and so the subject matter of the film is uh, triggering or touching or you know impactful to say the very least. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about it and why you felt this was the right time to share this project with the world? Well, you know, I kind of got pitched the idea at a party. Uh, this white guy, James Frey, who some people may or may not know, he's a novelist, got into a little trouble with Oprah, but yeah. he cleaned it up. And he was just like, look, man, I got this idea for a movie, but I can't write it because of who I am. And I was like, well, what's the idea? And he's like, black man, black woman on a first date, not going great, not going horribly. Um, they go home, they're on their way home, they get pulled over by a police officer, and things escalate, and they shoot the police officer in self-defense. Um, and just go on the run. And I was like, huh, like, that's interesting. And so we exchanged information, and I think he thought we probably won't hear from me again, but I was, that stayed with me. That did. Yeah. And he had an idea for a title and the whole story, and I said, I was like, if you don't mind, I want to throw hit the title and throw away the story and just start from scratch, like, just take this idea and yeah. run with yeah. it. And luckily he was like, yeah, sure, go for it. And um, I really got a chance to take that idea about blackness, about us sort of living under surveillance, us feeling like we have to go to war every time we walk, we walk out our door, um, what black unity is about, what black love looks like, um, and just sort of just, you know, but also black family dynamics as well. It's, that's the thing, it's like, it's also, a, yes, there's a level of like the police brutality of it all and yeah. how we have to deal with that all the time, but there's also a truth in that it is open season on black bodies and the fact that police officers walk free all the time for killing mm -hmm. us, it sends a message to me that my life is one that doesn't matter as much as my white counterpart. Yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about the transition for you writing from TV to film and then kind of how you and Melina came together with the process? This is your first feature. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And then this is her first time this directing first time a feature film. And feature. I know I said this to y'all already, but this is, you know, this is some bluest eye shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not, not comparing it to the bluest eye, but saying That's like the bluest there. eye is Toni Morrison's first novel. Which is crazy. And she knocked it the fuck out the park. Yeah, she and Queen and Slim hitting. is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, so y'all should be proud. Well, I, I received that. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, you should Melina. receive it because I would not lie to you. I would say be like, so your movie. <laughs> I started in comedy, so I'm used to those 30 pages. We we out. You know, then also job the people know I have a drama on television called The Shy. So, 60 pages, that was even difficult, but yeah. okay, get that. Mm -hmm. But to write like about, and it was, you know, I cut it down. I got to, I was about 122, the first draft, and I had to whittle it down and because there's a lot I was trying to do. Woo. Trying to find the beats, trying to find the balance, trying to make sure both characters had the same amount of agency and all that kind of stuff. And I was dolo, you know, I didn't have, you know, I did, a lot of sometimes people have miswritten uh, it in certain articles that I co-wrote the movie with James Frey, that's not true. I did have writer friends of mine who I trust and who I love and who I would say, hey, look at these beats. Like, is this making sense? Like, does this feel real to you like you know what we talk about you know in terms of the writing process like I do that for myself you know I always like say kick the tires like let me know if there's something off here um, and one of my writer friends um, who's so amazing her name is Kathy Sake she was the one who said start with the date I had something else before it mm -hmm. um, and, and she was like what are you doing like just start with the date and I was like oh well oof, that's tough because uh, I have to put so much into it and she just looked at me like well <laughs> yeah. Hard. So, you know, so. <laughs> it's a hard job, Classic, Lena. classic Kathy. Um, <laughs> for me, it really was a journey. It was mm -hmm. a journey for me. Um, and it was a journey for myself because there's so much of my stuff in it. You know, I can't right. not, mm -hmm. like, just peel off my skin and put it onto the pages. And so I think when people feel something so much when they're watching it, it's because you're feeling my trauma, you're feeling my um, unhealed wounds, you're feeling things that I've said, like I, I call Alana my legacy, you know what I mean? And so, you know what I mean? It's like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> 
But that you know, it's like <laughs> I'm so happy people have like taken to that. I didn't know. Oh, I think Melina was like, I hope that's not cheesy. I was like, well, I said she's like, okay, well, let's make sure it doesn't come off. But it's like it's all I know is how to pull from my own truth and my own stuff. And because also here's the other interesting fact is that if I got pulled over by a police officer for all the shit I'm talking, I would be like, yes, sir, no, sir. Got my, <laughs> I got my. I literally have my registration in my in my car easily to grab yeah like i always say whenever i have to renew it or get the thing i always say have it right here i always have my license on me when i go drive even just for a quick thing because the truth is i'm malcolm x in my life when i get pulled over i'm mlk i'm mm -hmm. like hello let's turn the other cheek like, <laughs> i love you <laughs> like i love my neighbor like i'm like because i want to make it home in terms of like a lot of the the comedic relief in the film right. and a lot of the the things that we really connected to in how authentically black they are. It was like, you either know what these people are saying or talking about or you do not. And right. if you don't, you just don't. Right. You know what I mean? And I, when I think about all of the films and shows that have really impacted me throughout my life, that is a huge part of it. That mm -hmm. It at least feels like there weren't a bunch of white people in the room saying, what does this mean? Right. Or can you say it like this? Yeah. Right. When you speaking to me like my cousins speak to me on film or on screen, yeah. right. I'm like, oh, this is for me. Mm -hmm. Yo, know, it's like, and I know that too. I know what it's like to look at a TV and see your reflection. I know it's like to look at a screen and go, oh, huh, I recognize that. I know that feeling. Yes. You know, and you know, even some of the lighter films like Best Man really had such a huge impact because there was something about those black people that were like, oh, we know them. And also it was a little bit aspirational too. Where it was like, oh, I want to be them or I want to live like that. Um, and so I just feel like when we get to be our honest, authentic selves on the screen, folks will respond. And here's the other crazy thing is like, white folks want to see that. They don't yes. want to see watered down black people. Mm. They want to see us as ourselves. Why would you say the centering of a black point of view is important, not just in this movie, which mm -hmm. I think is a little more evident, but in entertainment overall? Because I think the fact that we've seen so much of like racism mm -hmm. or what is decided to be racist through the lens of what white people have, have decided is okay to publish or okay mm -hmm. to present mm -hmm. really has affected a lot of us, like yeah. black people across the diaspora even, yeah. and our perceptions of of what it means to tell our own stories. Yeah, yeah. Are, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm really grateful to Donna Langley over at Universal because when I asked if uh, Melina and I could have final cut, and specifically she and I, obviously I know I have final cut on the script, but we also wanted, I wanted her to have final cut on the film, yeah. and by that it meant she and I. Mm -hmm. um, and Donna was like, yeah, absolutely. And that was really important. I think a lot of that did have to do with the strength of my script, and I also believe the strength of Melina's resume and who she is and how she's operated in the world. Yeah. There was no white exec that said, you have to do this, take this out, explain mm. this, take this note. And, uh, but also, too, the crazy thing is that's what happened on the Thanksgiving episode, is that I had, had no notes on that. Aziz was like, yo, take the floor, do your thing, tell your story, I'll come in and do my part, but like really tell your story in an honest, pure, specific way. And I did. And the way people reacted to it was mind blowing. I didn't know people it would take it the way they took it. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, it's going to be the black episode of Master of None. Cool. <laughs> but it turned into something that I couldn't have imagined, he couldn't have imagined. And what that told me from that experience was, oh, my pure voice does better when it's not, you know, watered down. Yeah. You see it. I think if you see, whether well, I don't know, certain black movies, you kind of wonder, huh, I wanted to feel more, huh, I wanted this to feel, be, be like this, or why well, wasn't that? And I'm sure there's some black writer somewhere behind the scenes, like, it was like that. I yes. did have that scene in there. I was trying to do this, but mm. the studio said, take this right. out. The studio said, don't do that. Because the movies that really stick with me are movies like Menace to Society, you know, um, mm -hmm. Do the Right Thing, feels like, you know, comes up, Just Know the Girl on the IRT. M wow. Movies, classic. People be sleep on that <laughs> joint. But it's like movies it's that classic. speak our language. Now, I feel like the studio system sometimes can be even more pervasive on black artists and yeah. so it's hard but that's why I was like with Barry Jenkins and Moonlight that one really touched us get yes. out really got us and so we still can get in there every now and then but to me Queen and Slim is like even hopefully trying to take it even further you know in terms of us having final cut because I don't know if Jordan Peele or um, or even Barry had final cut on those films but they do feel like people let them do their thing because yes. they're so specific and so on point mm -hmm. I like to believe they did their thing with it but um, but for me and Melina, we really want to be rebels and sort of be the NWA, you know, girls of film. Yes. In addition to being uh, vocal about representation in the industry, you also have very much put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. uh, you recently part partnered with uh, the Blacklist for Screenwriting Competition mm -hmm. for Emerging Voices, not to mention you have Hillman Grad, your own production company, mm -hmm. which provides opportunities to all kinds of emerging uh, artists and such in, in entertainment. So. Yeah. 
Can you speak a little bit more oh about, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm He's not, you know what I mean? Like, I got yes. her number and yes. whatnot. Like, I'm being mentored. He's like, the script is coming. Got it, good. You know? Mm -hmm. My thing is, what's the point of gaining weight if you can't throw it around? You know what I mean? Like, put your dick on the table. Real shit. <laughs> It, I will. You know, we'll <laughs> wait, in, no, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I um, did not think that through. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, look, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, I just want to leave this business in a better shape that I found it in. Yeah. And so I think, to me, I, I, it's not enough for me to, you know, I don't want to be lonely at the top. I want to be have all my people and a bunch of crowd. I want to be very crowded with black folks. And mm -hmm. so. I think it's important because also I start. I was an assistant, you know, and that's why I, I can't wait for folks to see Twenties, which will be on BET at some mm -hmm. point early next year, which sort of is a fi fictionalized version of my Twenties when I moved to LA and was tr struggling trying to become a television writer. But the truth is, I was Gina Prince Bythe was assistant for two years. I was a PA on Ava DuVernay's first narrative film. Uh, I worked for Mark Rocket Kill on The Game and Girlfriends. Like mm -hmm. I did the thing. I was there, and so. And it was great. Like, I enjoyed working for all those women. Like, I got to watch them and learn from them. And I think to me, it's like I wanted to give someone not just that, but even what I didn't have. It was sort of right. like, what if I was like, hey, I will sponsor you to go learn how to be a television writer. People say, I want to be a television writer. I say, have you ever been, had a writing class? Nah. And I'm like, OK, can you afford to go to writing class? Nah. OK, cool. Let's look into it. Let me start. What is it for me to spend money on you to go to writing class? And then you right. do that. And, go, and then I started saying, OK, let's find, let's raise money. Let's do scholarships. People that want to be actors. I'm like, have you been to an acting class? Have you been to a play? No, I haven't been to a play. OK, we'll do a thing where we'll talk to this theater and say, hey, can you give us seven tickets? You know, because if, I, if my office calls and says, yo, Lena, I want you to make seven tickets available for young people who can't afford to come to the theater for them to come and see and have that experience, they're often always like, sure, cool, we'll do that. Because they sort of have this thing about, well, you're Lena Waithe. And da -da -da -da. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. cool, let me use whatever bit of fairy dust I I can't mm. tell other folks really be educated about the craft. A lot of folks want to be on red carpets and go to premieres and go to parties. It's like, nah, I always say, study the craft of what you're trying to do, because that's something they can't take away from right. you. It's yes. like, I'm always going to eat because I know how to fish. Tell people what you're trying to do, and more often than not, you may run into somebody that go, oh, I can help you with that. Oh, I know somebody in that, in that, that area. Let me point you in the right direction. It's just important to me because to be in this business is a privilege. And the thing is, is like, I don't believe that we shouldn't hear a cool story or hear a, or see a dope actor because they weren't born into the business or because they don't they can't afford to come out to LA and intern. Right. So it's like to me, I do want to create a, a situation where they can come, they can learn, and we can put them right. If they willing to do the work, we can get you where you're trying to go, and mm -hmm. then then the business will start to look different because it, all these folks that hit me up are often people of color, they're often queer, they often come from low you know low income backgrounds. And so I'm like, yo, I got you. Come in, let's get it done. The read doesn't happen by accident. It's like there are other people out there that are like, hmm, they, they sound like us, or they remind me of me, or their language, the way they talk. And what happens is you, you're helping people see themselves. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like literally, that's what I think is important. Y'all are on TV now because for so long, people were just listening, listening, listening because they also know that language of, mm -hmm. that you speak. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh yeah, that's up. I mean, and so to me, the groundswell of that shows us that you guys are supposed to be in the culture because you are the culture. You are the culture, and you're showing people like, oh, they like us, and they out here being voices for us, representing us in a way. That's not always easy, because sometimes you may step this way, or you may do that, and people go, I don't like that, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. but you gotta always be true yes. to yourself. You <laughs> yeah. do, because there's always gonna be people that are gonna have something to say, but you have to be yourself, and just keep doing the work, and I think people are gonna continue to see you and appreciate it. Well, I want to say thank you so much to Lena Wade yes. for joining us tonight. That's right. Right. Make sure that you catch her new film, Queen and Slim, yes, in theaters November 27th. That's right, next week. Make a play, Thanksgiving. eat, maybe smoke if you choose. I and am, then... I choose, I do choose. Come see us. Or go yes. on a date. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a very, it's a very interesting first. I wonder if it's, it, I wonder if it's I said that. a good first date movie. I feel like this movie on the first date, maybe the third day. It's I a little it's intense. It's a little first intense. Day. But I look this way, he's like, first date. Do I just it. feel like it's going it's to bring the unless You're you typical, you, you like, what, are you feel like awkward? <laughs> <laughs> Are you weird? Yes, more of, mm. more of a Greg impression. Yeah. <laughs> Top or bottom? Queen Slim is out on November 27th, guys. Thanks so much I for coming. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. The answer if it's going to be a second date. And we will be back. <laughs> Are you versatile? Or answer? Oh, my God. I don't know what anybody on this stage is talking about. Netflix, where it was this thing called dating. It was about this dating thing. It was really cool. And it was, it was like basically like a person 
they the uh, their friends pick five people for them to go on a first yes, date with. You know what I, I can't remember that. what it was called. But they have I was like they better have like a gay one. And they did they did they had two. They had one with the lesbians, which I enjoyed, and they had one with the gay man. I was like, okay, I'll watch the gay man one. And the funny one, he was very cute, Asian guy. And he asked he wasn't I don't think being that four, he just asked the guy, he said, What what are you top or bottom? And the guy was like, Well that's a little for it. And the guy was like, Well, no, it'll determine whether we go on a second date or not. <laughs> right. And I, I was like, know. I, and I was and the guy was like, Oh, and I still he still didn't really answer it, but I thought you, see, I just got educated. I was like, that's right. He does have a right to ask that yeah. question on the first date. And the guy was all offended. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't pick him for the second date. And we don't know what his positions are. Yeah, because right. I already know. If but you, the guy was being weird about it. But the dude was so out. respectful. He wasn't being like a dick about it. He was like genuinely asking. I think he kind of liked the dude. And the dude got weird about it. So I was like, well, I'm being I mean, educated right if now. If you know it's not going to work out, then like, why even waste your time? The dude was trying to figure it out. He liked the guy. It's one of the first check boxes on the apps, yeah. girl. Like, <laughs> oh, well, see, they, that, well, that's the thing. It wasn't an app. It was like a dude. <laughs> So right. That's why he was like, I got to ask all y'all the question I didn't know. Mm -hmm. He was conservative, uh, conservative butch queen. Oh, no. oh. We're not going to be painting each other's nails, sis, so you need to let me like. know. Exactly. <laughs> straight dudes are doing the nail You got to go find somebody anyway. who... Nah, a lot of straight dudes, I'm saying, it's a trend now. Mm -hmm. Like, straight guys are doing, they got, like, nail paint. They got, like, yeah. black. acrylics and all. Well, I have okay, seen no. <laughs> Niggas are not doing acrylics. That's your people, okay? <laughs> okay, you said acrylics. They like, doing acrylics and everything. I just made it more like... A as long French? as we understand, I'm the only long nail bitch in this relationship. No, yeah, but I am big on like <laughs> guys as long as you get that. straight or getting their nails and toes done. Oh yeah, yes. no, y'all need pedicures, manicures, they all need that it. shit, all that I'm shit. A, that's not more than anybody. That's not gay or that that's ear needling. Like, y'all need all that shit. Especially when I tell you to kick rocks, you don't need for them feet to be. Oh, kicked. oh. <laughs> I'm sure you said that many a time. <laughs> After the second date. <laughs> this is my favorite. First Time date. Time for yes. you to go, actually. Bye. All right, Maria. listen. Bye. Bye. Are we not done? Wait, I thought we were just bullshit. We're, we're, we're not still. We're not, that's not I said that in case because I feel like they're going <laughs> to use something from that. That's the show. None of that is airy. That's going to get y'all what Tank got lip service. Ooh. Ooh. All righty. Tank, well, yeah. So, uh, lips, we love Shay. <laughs> <laughs>